Now we will go over Kirchhoff's rules with uh, an example. So we have two rules we need to consider. The junction rule, which is due to conservation of charge. The net current that enters a junction is zero at a junction. That's known as Kirchhoff current law, KCL. And there is the loop rule, which is conservation of energy. If I start at one point and travel through the circuit and come back to the same point, the conservation of energy tells me that it must have the same potential. The potential difference delta V is equal to zero in a closed loop. This is known as Kirchhoff's voltage law KVL. So in this example, we have uh, I1, I2 and I3 in question. So I1 is the current that flows uh, through the 6 ohm resistor, I2 is the one that flows uh, th through the battery and I3 is the one that flows through the 2 ohm resistance. As now, you can see that when I form Kirchhoff current law, uh, I can write this at point uh, C for example. Uh, so let's start with Kirchhoff current law at point C, 1 first equation I will get, the net current that enters point C should be equal to zero, the total current. So I1 plus I2, I1 and I2 are entering, I3 is leaving, so minus I3 is entering, uh, and this must add up to zero. This is Kirchhoff current law. I have written this at point C. So this is my junction, point C. The total current that enters this junction should be equal to zero. Okay, because we have conservation of charge, I1 plus I2 must be equal to I3. The charge that enters the junction C per unit time must be equal to the charge that leaves junction C per unit time. That's due to conservation of charge. Now, as for the second equation between I1, I2 and I3, I will consider the loop KVL1. So this is Kirchhoff voltage law 1. So for this one, I'm going to start at point B and end at point B. Okay, so I will do this loop. Now, uh, if I look at my current convention here, what I have called I2 is flowing uh, in this direction, which means there's a voltage drop here, so plus minus 4 ohms, plus minus 14 volts, etc. And on the other hand, my convention for I1 is flowing to the right, that means this is minus plus 10 volts, plus minus 6 ohms, because I have a voltage drop as I1 flows through the 6 ohm resistor. Okay, so uh, first I will start with 4i2, so I see the plus first, 4i2, then I have plus 14 volts, then I have minus 6i1, and then I have plus 10 volts. So this is 4i2 plus 14 volts minus 6i1 plus 10 volts is equal to zero. So I, has, I have started at point B and ended at point B uh, in the loop KVL1. So this gives me uh, 4i2 minus 6i1 uh, in total. So this is 4i2 minus 6i1 is equal to uh, 10 plus 14, 24, but taken to the right side becomes minus 24. Or I can write this as 2i2 minus 3i1, if I divide this equation by 2, is equal to minus 12. And this is Kirchhoff voltage law for, for the first loop, KVL1. Now I need another equation, three unknowns requires three independent equations here. So uh, for this one, I will consider the loop KVL2. Now look at my current convention here. 
I1 goes to the right, so this is minus 10 volts uh, plus uh, 6I1, and I3 uh, flows uh, basically to the left uh, across 2 ohms, so this will be uh, plus 2I3. So looking at the convention for this current. So I have uh, plus 2I3, 2I3, minus 10 volts plus 6I1 is equal to 0. So 6I1 plus 2I3 must be equal to 10. And if I divide this uh, equation by 2, this will become 3I1 plus I3 equals 5. So that is my KVL number 2, Kirchhoff voltage law number 2. So I have obtained three equations, KCL equation, KVL1 and KVL2. Now let's summarize what we have obtained here. Uh, KVL1 equation is going to tell me what I2 is. So KVL1 equation here is 3I1 minus 12 divided by 2 is equal to I2. So let's isolate I2. I2 is equal to 3I1 minus 12 divided by 2. So that's basically this equation, 3I1 minus 12 divided by 2. And that gives me 1.5I1 minus 6 for I2. Now I go to KVL2 equation, Kirchhoff voltage law 2 equation. It is... Uh, 3i1 plus i3 equals to 5. So i3 is 5 minus 3i1. So this equation gives me i3 in terms of i1. It is 5 minus 3i1. Then I go to my Kirchhoff current law equation, KCL, which was written at junction uh, C. Uh, now I have i1 plus i2 minus i3 equals 0. So i1 uh, is I1. For I2, I write 1.5 I1 minus 6. And for I3, uh, which is minus I3 here, minus I3, which is 5 minus 3 I1, this must be equal to 0. That's Kirchhoff current law. So I have I1 plus 1.5 i1 then i have minus 6 and i have plus 3 i1 minus 5 when i distribute the minus sign into the parentheses this gives me uh, 3 plus 1.5 3 plus 1.5 plus 1 5.5 i1 equals to Minus 5 and minus 6 gives me minus 11, so 11. So this tells me that I1 is equal to 11 divided by 5.5. That's 2 amperes. I1 is 2 amperes. And now I2 is 1.5 I1 minus 6. So it's 1.5 times 2 minus 6. So this gives me I2, 3 minus 6, minus 3 amperes. So the convention was incorrect for I2. It appears it, because it has a minus sign. And I3 is 5 minus 3 I1. So it's 5 minus 3 times 2. So I3 turns out to be 5 minus 6, which is minus 1 amperes. It's also negative, so I3 actually flows in the opposite direction. Okay, 
So this was an example for Kirchhoff's rules. Kirchhoff has two rules, junction rule and loop rule. Junction rule is a statement of conservation of charge. The total current entering a junction is equal to zero. And how do I find the total current entering a junction? For those that are going into the junction, I take a positive sign. For the ones leaving the junction, I put a negative sign. So negative I3 is entering the junction. So I1 plus I2 minus I3 equals zero. That's Kirchhoff current law. Then to apply Kirchhoff voltage law, which is the loop rule, that's the statement of conservation of energy, the net, uh, the sum of the potential differences is equal to zero in a closed loop. So if I, if I start at point B, I end at point B, that gives me KVL1. So the first thing I did was set up the convention for currents. Now you can see that I2 must flow in the direction of decreasing potential. So it is plus minus four, uh, plus minus uh, potential difference on 4 ohms plus minus on the battery. So that's uh, I2 times 4 plus 14. Then going to this uh, branch, I have here I1 flowing in, uh, in this direction, which means the voltage drop is uh, plus minus to the right. So this is going to give me minus 6 I1. Then I see the plus sign here, plus 10 volts. So 4 I2 plus 14 minus 6i1 plus 10 is equal to 0. And then I applied Kirchhoff voltage law the second time for this uh, loop, uh, starting at point C, uh, basically this is written from point C going back to point C. I have uh, 2i3, th this is the voltage drop, minus 10 and then plus 6i1 is equal to 0. Uh, and this gives me my third equation. So manipulating these three equations, isolating uh, I2 and I3, writing them in terms of I1, uh, and putting the results into the first current equation, Kirchhoff uh, current law equation, I obtain I1, I2, and I3. You can see that I1 turned out to be two amperes. So this convention was correct, but I2 and I3 are actually flowing in opposite directions. So I3 is entering the junction, I2 is leaving the junction because of the minus sign that I have obtained in my final answer.